Joining us now, the co-CEOs and founders of the data and analytics company Apple Cart, Sasha Samatin and Matt Kalmans. Guys, good morning. Good to see you. Joe, you take the first question. Okay, sure will. Hey, Sasha, uh, first of all, let, let, let's just explain to our viewers how these elections are run. Like, for instance, uh, what, what happens, who emerges in, in New York City? Like, Bill de Blasio, nobody expected him to win, uh, and yet he pulled off a shocking win. What can we learn from 2013? Well, I think one of the things we can learn from 2013 is that this race really won't be decided until the you know, the very last couple days when people t- tune in just because it's an off-year election it's going to be very very low turnout uh and you know there's a big open question who actually shows up how do they feel about the issues and the candidates do they even know who the candidates are and a lot of people are just starting to tune in right now yeah i want to put that chart back up there and and uh, sasha as you look at it it shows uh 3.2 million registered democrats uh, only 8.8% of Democrats uh, ended up uh, you know, voting for the eventual mayor of New York City. This is just the way it works out. And it is always really, if you look look into it, that one of the most important political jobs in America, one of the, uh, one of the toughest political jobs in America, are determined by such a small sliver of voters. It sure is. It's uh, been the standard in the city, but the the mayor of New York is, as you said, one of the most recognizable political figures in the country. And it's about eight percent of Democrats who who usually chooses that person. That makes up four to five percent of overall the city of New York. So uh, it will be interesting to see sort of who is the four to five percent this year and who do they vote for. Yeah. And Matt, um, uh, when people think of New York City, they think of it as a very liberal city. And you would think that the Democrat you would think that the Democratic primary voters would be overwhelmingly liberal. That's just not the case. A, a strong majority don't identify themselves as such. Tell us tell us about the New York City uh, primary voter that's going to be voting uh, in, in in this race. Well, that's absolutely right, Joe. I mean, I think a lot of people think about New York City elections and they think about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. They think about Jamal Bowman. They think about Bill de Blasio. What's really interesting is that our firm has conducted over 7,000 interviews of New York City voters over the last several months. And what we've seen is that a majority of voters uh, who are registered Democrats, this is Democrats exclusively, self-identify as something other than liberal. Uh, and perhaps more interesting, as you look at uh, the national dialogue about defunding the police, about crime, uh, we asked an open-ended question of New York City voters, asked them whether they thought the city was on the right track, wrong track, again, just of Democrats who are eligible to vote in this primary election. Uh, and when we asked them that, those that said that the city was on the wrong track when you ask them to volunteer why they thought the city was on the wrong track, number one answer volunteered by voters by a double digit margin uh, was public safety and crime. Uh, so when you actually go to an election where people are choosing who's going to run their city, uh, their municipal government, that's what's top of mind for Democrats. Well, and, and Willie, if you look at the issues here, and I know Jonathan Lemire has a, has a question, but I just, uh, since he's, he talked about this, I, if I find this fascinating. Uh, number one, crime <clears throat> and public safety, 30 uh, percent top issues cited here. Uh, then you've got some anti-incumbent uh, feelings there. <laughs> then look right below that homelessness <laughs> mm. and the economy. Now, those are those are uh, those three issues, crime and public policy, homelessness and the economy. Those are the three things that my Republican friends uh, growls about when they're talking about how New York City's not the same as it was in the past, uh, you know, before the pandemic, uh, bef- you know, uh, when Bloomberg was in or Giuliani was in there. It is, again, when it comes to crime, and, and you always have the media making the mistake of thinking, oh, these Democrats in New York City want to defund the police. No, no, actually, if you follow it closely, 
uh, there are a lot of neighborhoods who are saying we need more police. We need more police on the street. We need more police in the schools. Our children are not safe. Yeah, and neighborhoods of color, <laughs> neighborhoods that are impacted yeah. uh, by a lack of policing. If you put that chart up, you can see that NYPD reform is way down on page two of that list. I can't count that high. I think it's 10 or 11. Uh, interesting, Jonathan, you and I were sort of smiling that anti de Blasio is a <laughs> policy issue and it comes in at number two in New York. Yeah, and that's not just a polling of Andrew Cuomo. Uh, yeah, it is interesting, though, to the stereotype of a New York City, as we're talking about voter, you know, liberal voter. It's not, but it's not just the Upper West Side who votes for these things. It's not just Upper West Side Manhattan right. and Park Slope and Brooklyn. It's Central Brooklyn. It's other neighborhoods, more working class communities of color who are, at least in this polling, seem to prioritize uh, public safety issues. That's going to be a driving issue in this campaign. Uh, Matt, let me ask you, uh, this election for New York City is going to be a little different. It's a ranked choice voting for the first time uh, being done here in, in the nation's largest city. So I was hoping you could talk to us just a little bit about how that works. But more than that, provide also just a snapshot of where the race stands right now. Andrew Yang, the former presidential candidate, he's sort of been atop these polls barely. Uh, Eric Adams, who's the Brooklyn Borough President, a former police officer, he's African-American. He seems to be in second place in most places. And then Catherine Garcia, who we just mentioned, who's a long time, you know, worked for the city, basically ran, ran the Department of Sanitation. Uh, there seems to be a little buzz around her right now who picked up the endorsements of both the New York Times but also the New York Daily News, which plays well uh, in those working class communities we were just talking about. Well, that's exactly right, Jonathan. Uh, this uh, ranked choice voting initiative that passed uh, in New York City over the last couple of years is really going to scramble the race in a major way. What ranked choice voting does is rather than a voter voting for a single candidate, what they're able to do is rank their top five candidates in order of preference. Uh, and what happens is that candidates are eliminated who, uh, you know, so you look at the first round, you look at people's first choice votes. If you don't get a majority of voters that support one candidate, you eliminate the least votes get, vote getting candidate. And then if you eliminate their voters, uh, what happens is those voters preferences get reallocated to their second choice. So what that means is that in an election uh, like this one, it's a very crowded race. Uh, a lot of candidates don't have high name identification, aren't well known. What that means is that uh, it's really going to favor candidates who are well known by a large number of voters. Uh, and it's also interestingly going to be favor, uh, it's also going to favor candidates who uh, have voters who understand how to use ranked choice voting, who understand what, what we just talked about there, uh, because they will preference voters uh, in a way that, uh, preference candidates rather, in a way that will benefit, uh, you know, the, the candidates that they uh, prefer. So as you look at this race, as you mentioned, Andrew Yang's done very well in polling in the early part of this race, predominantly because he, uh, you know, he ran for president. He was very well known. He had sky high name ID. About 80 percent of these uh, registered Democrats in New York knew who he was. A lot of these candidates were lesser known. But I think as the race is maturing in these last couple of weeks, as you mentioned, Eric Adams has crept up in the polls. Uh, and there, there's a major reason for that, which is that he's the Brooklyn borough president. Uh, it's a very sizable portion of the Democratic primary electorate that lives in Brooklyn. Uh, and then beyond that, uh, he's a candidate of color. Um, and in a ranked choice voting system, uh, that can be a major advantage uh, because there are going to be a sizable portion of the Democratic primary electorate, about a third, that are going to be black voters. Uh, and those voters uh, heavily uh, advantage uh, Eric Adams. So, uh, gentlemen, this is Michael Steele here. A, a lot of talk about Democrats. And New York's a Democratic city. We get it. Understand that. Are there Republicans in the race? What do they stand? What are their chances here? Particularly given ranked choice voting, because it is it is opportunity for it to be a great level of the partisan sort of baggage that tends to come into races in cities like New York and Baltimore and elsewhere where, um, you know, you're outnumbered as a Republican. I grew up in Washington, D.C., <laughs> you know, 10 to 1. Yeah, OK, whatever. You just, you know, just passed through the election. Um, so how do, how do you assess the Republican field here such that it exists and and their possibility of being competitive in this system if not in this race but in future races with ranked choice voting well that, that's a really interesting question michael because uh unfortunately uh or fortunately what you find is that in this race 
Uh, the Republicans really don't have a voice unless they're registered as Democrats. Uh, New York City has a closed primary system, which means that if you're not registered as a Democrat, uh, you can't participate in this election that's going to choose the next mayor of New York in the defining election, that June primary. Uh, the deadline for changing your party registration if you wanted to participate in the Democratic primary was February 14th. It was a long time ago. Uh, New York City, there's seven times more Democrats than there are Republicans uh, these days. And what that means is that coming out of this June 22nd election, you're, you're really going to know who the mayor is just based on that partisan split. Uh, and the reality is a lot of voters don't understand that. Uh, in our polling, what we've seen is we asked really two questions to understand whether voters understood how this election was going to be decided. The first question was which, which election matters, the primary or the general? Uh, this election in June or the election in November. Second question we asked was, how are you going to vote? Are you going to use ranked choice voting, standard voting? How is this election going to be operated? It was two thirds of voters who could not answer those questions correctly. <clears throat> and we're just a few weeks out from the election. So, Sasha, before we go, let you kind of handicap the race here and what you're looking for, because it, it's only a, a month from Saturday is Election Day, just over four weeks away. Um, Eric Adams is out on top in a new poll. Uh, Andrew Yang as well, who got a lot of national attention, frankly, because a lot of national media just knew who he was. He's come down a little bit since those early days. And Scott String Stringer, who was the former Manhattan borough president, now the comptroller in New York. What are you going to be looking for in these last four weeks or so? Well, I think it'll be interesting to see if anyone makes a late move. And I certainly think Catherine Garcia is probably the person best set up to do that, just given the New York Times and the New York Daily News endorsements. Uh, you know, if Andrew Yang was going to seal the election up, that would have happened already. So at this point, I'd probably rather be Eric Adams than anybody else. He's been creeping up in the polls and Yang has been stagnant or falling in the last several polls that have been publicly released. All right, co-CEOs and founders of the data and analytics company AppleCart, Sasha Samatin and Matt Collins. This has been an exciting episode of New York One, and I've been Pat Kiernan. <laughs> Thanks so much.